Hey internet, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a full face of Astralis makeup. I use full face the term lightly because I actually don't have a ton of Astralis makeup with me. I ordered these items a little while ago and I probably could try and spend more time scouring the internet, maybe visiting more price lines and trying to get a full suite of everything. But I'll be honest, not that I don't love Astralis, like I do love Astralis. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, Astralis is an Australian brand, hence the name. Um, I kind of see them being a little similar to Face of Australia, which I don't know if Face of Australia is still around. Um, it's been a really long time since I've stepped foot into like a big price line, like the one in the city on along Burke Street. That's probably my favorite one to go to, but I haven't been in the city for ages. And when I do go, it's mostly just to see friends, like for a dinner or lunch or something. So I'm not really browsing around the city. So I'm just kind of apologizing ahead of time that if you were expecting every single makeup item that I use to be Australis, um, you may be a little disappointed. I am still probably going to stick mostly to Australis products because I don't need to have like the full suite of everything. Um, I think the main thing I'm missing that I would normally use is actually mascara now that I look at my pile, which is a bit disappointing because that's probably some, I would definitely use mascara, but we'll just see how we go. I'll link all the products down below if you are curious and I will use a mascara, so I'll just have to pick one from a different brand um, and I'll make sure to link that down as well in case you're interested. So I'm gonna start off by, <laughs> I saw this trick on Instagram where like somebody did this and it pulled their hair back and it looked really good, but I don't think it's working for me for some reason. So I'm just gonna do this. It's probably a lot less pretty, but I'm going more for functionality than looks right now. All right, so foundation. So the foundation I picked up, I think this is their lightest one. It says it's full coverage. It is the Fresh and Flawless full coverage foundation. Um, I've used this a couple times now. I actually quite like this. It's a pretty good foundation. I'm in the shade, it does say the shape well before you use. Where is the shade Pearl? Yeah. I bought most of this stuff from Priceline, the Priceline website. I think the only other sort of drugstore makeup websites I'm familiar with is maybe Chemist Warehouse. They always have really good prices, but whoop, <laughs> I don't think I saw the Astralis brand on their website. I mean, I could have missed it. That. <clears throat> If I was honest, Priceline, like Chemist Warehouse, Priceline, the websites are horrible. <laughs> They're just so like busy. Well, Chemist Warehouse's website is really busy, so it's a little like overwhelming to navigate. And this is coming from someone who works in IT, so I'm very comfortable with websites, but that one is just like, it's like EB games when you go in and it's just like, like um, they have their prices and sales just everywhere. And you're like, where do I look? <laughs> it's everywhere. Priceline is a better website, but when you actually delve into it, the functionality is still pretty not great. Um, so I do uh, know that I think they're looking to fix that at some point, but I suspect it will take a while. Like most, most revamps to e-commerce websites do take a lot longer than anticipated. I felt like this shade when I first got it was a little, and it's very liquidy. You can kind of see how liquidy the foundation is, but it is pretty pigmented. I did, however, find that it was a little bit on the lighter side for me. At least that's how I felt. So I'm just going to put it on. Like when I put it on my face like this, it feels like it's on the light side. So I've been trying to um, darken it a little bit by mixing with other foundations. But for the purpose of this video, I don't want to do that. Just kind of want to show you guys what it's like on its own. Um, so I probably could have gone for a slightly darker shade. However, once you blend it out, like you'll see, once you start to blend it out, it's almost like a non issue. And you can go back and layer it if you want a lot more coverage. keep forgetting I need to bring a Max Fix Plus. Um, I need to buy a new one because I have one at my other office, but I don't have one here. Okay, so I can tell that my skin tone is like lightened a little bit. On camera, it's not so obvious. You know what's interesting though? It doesn't feel as full coverage on my cheeks. I don't know if I just haven't used enough. Maybe I need to use more. Because um, I can still see all my freckles. And I think um, 
that's kind of how I gauge whether something is full coverage or not. Just go over my eyelids just to even out the skin tone as well. Okay, I don't know why I thought it was full coverage because now when I'm looking at it, I don't feel like it is but you know what, maybe it's because I was mixing it. The foundation I usually mix it with is this one here, the Shiseido um, Perfect Refining Foundation. I mean, I don't never considered this one to be full coverage either but when I mix the two, the shade is a much better match for me so maybe that's what was causing it to go more full coverage because yeah, it says full coverage it definitely doesn't feel very full coverage to me. It feels like more medium coverage, to be honest. But maybe if that's what you like, that's so good. I think, I wonder whether it's my application technique. Um, because when I use, I'm just trying to grab a bit of foundation and just kind of patting it on my freckles. And it, it does cover better if I do it this way. So maybe it would have been better with a beauty blender. I don't know, I feel like for the most part, if a foundation is good, then the application technique shouldn't matter a whole bunch. Like, yeah, it will matter to some degree, but it shouldn't um, completely change the effect of the foundation. At least that's just my opinion. Not everyone has all the tools, right? Like, let's be honest. I might have all these foundation brushes. Like, I have a lot of different foundation brushes. I have beauty blenders. And the average bear wouldn't have any of that stuff, so it shouldn't need to have that le that range of tooling to make the foundation look good. All right, so yeah, I'm not super. I kind of I'm eating my words now. I'm like not super impressed with it, but let's just keep going. So the next product I'm going to use is I already can tell is definitely probably too light for me, but maybe it's going to be good for highlighting. It's this concealer from the same line, Fresh and Flawless. And it is in the shade Ivory. I think it was the lighter shade. It's so interesting because I am so used to just going for the lighter shade for most brands. And I find recently, maybe it's because um, most companies are trying to have a more diverse shade range, that now I'm kind of shifting more into the second or third lightest. Um, but it's hard to tell sometimes because, for example, like Remel foundations, if I don't get the absolute lightest, even the lightest sometimes is a little bit too dark for me for some reason. But, um, and if I just go the second lightest, then it's like a 10. So, yeah, it's hard because I do, I realize the reason it's hard is also because I do most, almost all my makeup shopping online. I don't actually go into store. It's, it's kind of hard because when you go into store, maybe the pandemic has just made it too easy. Like when you go into store, the range is just never as good as online because online they can have everything in their catalog but when you go into store sometimes things are out of stock they don't have it but then you can't really test the shade colors so you, i kind of use a lot of uh, foundation matching quizzes online to see what's what but um with lesser known brands like australis they're just not like big like bobby browns and chanel's and stuff um they usually don't feature in those um foundation matrix matching tools so yeah you just kind of have to take a guess So I'm going to apply, so this is a doe foot applicator, I'm just going to apply it under my, oh yeah, it's super light, under my eyes. Maybe I will highlight, I'll just use it to highlight a few things since I'm here. And let's see what it's going to be like. Pat it down, at least I'm okay with bright under eyes, it definitely does feel bright. You know, it's not too bad, it is blending in, but I'm going to use my finger for the other side just to see if there's a difference. knows a huge difference you can I feel like finger blending always generally works out pretty well yeah, okay 
to be honest. I don't think it did much in terms of like concealing, but it definitely was a good brightener. I feel like there's a little bit more dimension brought back to my face. So, and I quite like the formula for the concealer. It's pretty nice. All right, next one is going to be powder. So you guys know I usually like to use pressed powder for my whole face and loose powder just for um, setting certain areas that tend to crease more. Um, but I only have the loose powder. So I'm just gonna use this quite generously, let it set, and then what I usually do is brush it up. up, up, up and then what I usually do is then brush it um, on the rest of my face so I can use it kind of like a pressed powder, if that makes sense. So this one is the banana powder and loose. Um, I don't think it has a shade number. I think it's just like a general banana powder. So let's open this up and it's brand new. So the sticker is still on here. The powder feels a little bit on the yellowy side. I don't know how, like, I don't know, maybe it's like there's a neutralizing agent to it, but like, I can't imagine this being universally, um, universally usable if that makes sense what i might actually do because i don't think there's a lot of it i'm just going to apply a light dusting to the rest of my face because eventually i do want to put like blush and highlighter and stuff on so just set it it's a nice powder though like i'm, I'm not sure how this would work for say other skin tones but for me it seems pretty pretty okay i'm quite liking it all right, so I'm gonna move on to the eyes and I'll do the rest of the face later. So I have this really big palette here. It's the face and eye palette and it has like a range of different colors that I'm gonna be able to use for my eyeshadow. So there's three here. I'm gonna try and use all of them. I probably will, there's only three. And these are like the face products. So you've got your blush, bronzer and highlighter. I'm not really a fan of the blush, but for the sake of this video, I am gonna try using it. I might just have to go really light because I'm not used to using such a terracotta color. It's like really terracotta color. So I'm just gonna apply my Tarte Shape Tape Eye Primer because I don't have an Australis eye primer. Although I've seen a lot of people just use concealers and foundations as eye primers now, which maybe you could get away with that. I haven't actually personally done that, but I can see how it works and it just saves you from having to carry another product around. Right, so. I'm gonna take this sort of, I'm gonna take this crease color first and kind of generously blend it into my crease a little bit on my lid. I usually would do a lid color first, but because the lid color I wanna use here is more shimmery, I wanna layer that on top instead of underneath and then redoing it again, so. I do love how big this mirror is on the palette though. This makes it so easy to do your makeup. Now I'm gonna go in with a deeper shade. I'm gonna take this like purple and use it on the outer corner. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that the eyeshadows do blend quite well. Like it's not too much of a struggle to get it to blend out. And like some of the eyeshadows, it can be like, once you put the color down, it pretty much isn't gonna budge from where it is. And that's really frustrating. This is definitely much smokier than I thought I was gonna wear today. All right, and then I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take this center one and just use this more on the inner corner to the center of my lids. It's quite, um, it's almost a little bit too glittery. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's very powdery, so it's kicking up a lot, and it doesn't feel like it's, um, 
feels more like a glitter shade than a satin shade which is a bit annoying because it's not exactly what I was looking for but I think that's just more personal preference I'm not I'm not I like the convenience of having such a big palette that contains a lot but I'm not convinced this is the right color story combo or the right textures that they're using in this palette so that would be probably one of the criticisms I have I mean if I overlay it on top of my lid so I'm just gonna go more on the lid than I thought I would it's not too bad like it it makes um, the colors that are already there look a little bit more satiny but I was hoping for something a bit stronger all right, for the brow bone, I think I'm going to actually go into the highlight shades. So technically, I think this is the highlight shade for your face. But, you know, let's see. It's kind of got a similar, I don't know if you can see, a little bit of similar consistency to that shadow I just used in that it's a bit um, powdery grainy. So I hope that it blends out. Well, it's, it's a, but it does come off a little bit more satin, so... Maybe I should have used that instead. Yeah, I actually prefer this one. I should have used this one instead. Oh well. What's done is done. So now I'm going to move on to lining my eyes. So I'm using this one here. It's the She's Precise Liquid Eyeliner. And I actually have used this a few times now. I really quite like this one because it is a brush um, liner. And I love brush liners, so let's see how we go. Super pigmented, like I don't know if you can see, just like one swipe done. I'm gonna go for something a little bit more dramatic than what I'm used to. Okay. Not my finest work, but <laughs> it'll do. I hate doing liquid liner on video because it's always like, I can't go right into a mirror and completely block my face. So I still have to show my face and then I get nervous and then it's so it's like, ergonomically it's not as comfortable and then there's the added pressure that you have to get this right because if you don't you have to do the whole thing all over again because I'm gonna take all the eye makeup off so it's like oh so much pressure anyways definitely a highlight product I really like this one um, I'm gonna put on some mascara and because I didn't get an Australis mascara I'm probably just gonna go ahead and use this Maybelline one that I featured a little while back Right, mascara done. I'm gonna move on to the brows. So I actually ended up getting two brow products that I'm not sure I really like. I'm not quite haven't worked it out yet. Um, one is a brow pencil, but it's like a very normal looking brow pencil. Like I prefer the retractable ones because they're much finer and thinner. Whereas this is literally one you'd have to sharpen with a pencil sharpener. And then instead of a spoolie, it has like this brush. So to me, this is like considered a bit um, cheap. Then I have brow gel. So brow gel is like a staple for me. I will often just use this instead of actually filling out my brows. So I'm glad I managed to pick that up. Um, so let's, let's see how we go. I'm gonna brush up my brows first actually before I fill in any blank spots. Okay, I'm going in pretty light because I think it's very easy to overdo your brows. Uh, are you guys noticing any difference? Okay, it's actually a really hard pencil. I was like, I'm not noticing any difference. I have to go a little harder to get the... Yeah, okay, here, now I can see. It's usually around my arches where I need a little bit of help. Not too bad. I think what would annoy me is the fact that I have to sharpen this all the time to get that pointed tip because it would get blunt really quickly. So in that sense, but then we'll just put the gel through. And I quite like the gel. I like that the spoolie is quite large. 
So you can really lift your brows. Yeah, I quite like it. All right, let's go back to the rest of the face. So, um, I might use the bronzer a little bit, but I'm almost going to use it more as a contour. So I'll just tap it. Everything here seems pretty pigmented, so I'm a bit wanting to use a very light hand before I go, before I regret. Mm, yeah, okay. I'm doing a really, really light contour because I'm not someone who likes to like warm up my complexion. I actually prefer a more bright complexion. So I tend to lean on bronzers more as contours or to add a little bit of dimension to the face. And um, yeah, if you use a light hand, it's actually not too bad. And that's usually where I use it for. I don't really use it anywhere else. If there's any extra, I'll put it around here, but because my hair's clipped up at the moment, once I unclip it, then it doesn't. A lot of this will get covered. Um, all right, blush. <laughs> uh, let's use this one. All right, actually, I'm going to use this, I'm gonna use this mini, mini blush. All right. So I'll pick up some, let's see how I go. Mm. You know what? Okay. Not my color, but it's blending. I've used a really, really light hand. Um, yeah, not not my color, <laughs> but I like the quality. It's not too bad. Like, if this was say a, a soft pink or a coral or something, then I'd probably use it more. It's, it's blending, but it's not blending. I feel like it's not blending down much. I feel like it's not blending more than it could. Mm, okay. You know, it's not bad, but I don't know. I don't like, I'm not a big fan of this blush because I don't think it's blending out the way I'm trying to. Like I'm trying to just soften the edges here and here, but it's not, it feels like it's stubborn. It's not doing it. Okay, we'll go for the highlighter, which we tried before and it was pretty okay. Turning up. Yeah, okay. So I'm like... Uh, I like the connect here, it's kind of like cool. Okay. All right, that palette is done. And um, last one is lipstick. So this lipstick is like a mini one. I purposely got the mini lipstick because I have quite a few lipsticks that I love and would use religiously and I have this weird feeling that I'm probably not going to use this one a lot so I'd rather try and get smaller versions so that I have an opportunity to try and use it up and it's not as wasteful. So this one is in the shade Con Couture and it is a nude shade. So let's give it a shot. You know, I quite like the um, quality of this. The, the color probably is a bit too, like it looks darker on camera, but when I look in person, it almost feels a little bit too nude for me. Um, is, that a, is, that a, is that a thing? Um, I pre as in like, I, I prefer with a little bit of more pink or coral color to it, but I actually quite like it. And the quality, it feels nice, it's creamy, it's smooth. Um, in terms of longevity, who knows? <laughs> Uh, but it feels like a nice quality lipstick. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a summary of the things I highly recommend to the things I don't really recommend. Um, highly recommend the lipstick. I thought the lipstick actually was really good. I really like the um, eyeliner as well and the brow gel. I don't know if you can go wrong with clear brow gel. Um, I guess the only issue I would have is that the fact that the whole thing is clear. So over time you're going to see your brow pencil colors deposit in here and it's gonna look gross. 
um, but you know whatever that's it's a personal thing some people don't care about that stuff so I really like these three um, the next one down under that would probably be the concealer I like the concealer I think it was hard for me to test how good it was at concealing because I picked something that was so light but the formula was quite nice it was creamy it was blendable so I do like that um, banana powder also kind of similar with the contour really like this I'm just kind of apprehensive as to whether most people could use this I don't know it felt semi translucent even though on the packaging it does say that it's supposed to help um, cancel out redness and hide your circles so that kind of implies that there is a certain level of pigmentation going in there um, in terms of things, I, I I don't think I'd recommend the rest, to be honest, <laughs> if I was being honest. Didn't really love this. Um, I like the concept, but the colors and the quality were definitely not that great. Um, not a big fan of the brow pencil, and I think, in retrospect, the foundation was kind of disappointing. So I can't see myself using this one up, to be honest. I might have to end up decluttering it. Um, actually, no. What I'm going to do is I'm trying to collect all the makeup I'm using this year that I've been quite disappointed in um, so I can do like a collection video of products I don't recommend at the end of the year so I think this is probably going to go into that one um, I might try using it a few more times because I feel like I don't want to condemn a product until I've really used it but yeah that's just how I'm feeling right now so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it kind of useful thank you so much for watching this is Selena reporting from my room back to internet Bye.